In the area where the fencing went up, there's been an obvious improvement around the San Francisco Federal Building. Someone should tell the Biden administration this is an option. Maybe there are other places in the country where we could deploy this new fence technology. That's funny. Let's get into it. Here we go. What is this new fence technology that we speak of? What workers were facing outside the San Francisco Federal Building and how it has changed? Well, I got to tell you, it looks a lot lot like a federal prison. Yeah, it's not a good look. You, 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 you walk up to the federal building in San Francisco and you're like, hmm, okay, are they trying to keep the animals in the cage or out of the cage? Cause either which way we got one of those options going on, right? There you go. There you go. There's a nice fence. You walk up to your federal building. It's so unsafe that you need to have that to protect the workers inside who right now are working from home. A few weeks ago, we learned that authorities were advising workers to work from home rather than come to the Nancy Pelosi Federal Building, which was constantly surrounded by drug dealers and addicts. Today, the San Francisco Standard has a follow-up story going into more detail about what workers at the building were dealing with prior to that announcement. The block where the building was sits recorded 525 drug-related incidents over the past 12 months, according to city data. In just the last few months, federal employees have had knives pulled on them. That's not good. Three times. And one person was chased with a hammer. Yeah, you know, homeless folks. Hammers, swords, sometimes a samurai sword. I mean, you know, they might be in a play. They might use it as a weapon. We're not really sure. This is according to an employee who did not want to be named because she was not authorized to speak on behalf of her agency. Are you authorized to speak? For the federal government? Uh, no, I'm not. But here's a little tidbit. Got chased with a hammer. Such incidents are more rare than the bloody sidewalks, human feces, and drug use many workers see daily, she added. It's definitely a sign of a bigger problem, she said. Sometimes I come home and cry after seeing what I've seen. On August 13th, about a week after workers were advised to stay home for their own safety, a body was found outside on the sidewalk. It's pretty normal, right? I mean, it's just, you know, somebody somebody expired. Somebody passed away out on the the sidewalk. I mean, San Francisco is just, just nothing new. Apparently, this was the result of an overdose, not a murder. Just the fact that you have to bring that up. You know what I mean? It's like, uh, oh, it's okay then. They OD'd? All right. it's This is okay. Still, you can see why coming into work at the building would be unnerving. Yes. And that's why they aren't. But now what we're doing is we're building a wall. We're building a wall. Yeah. Keep the animals in or keep the animals out. Yeah. Since then, some changes have been made to improve security at the site. Somewhat ironically, the Nancy Pelosi Federal Building is now protected by a tall fence and the consistent presence of federal officers. Here's the new fence. Here's a tweet. Let's take a look. Yeah, this is super welcoming for the Fed employees. Hey, come back to work. We fenced it in. Um, so this is now the uh, the actual fence here at the federal building. So this fence is the most recent fence. Um, but the fence right in here uh, was built... Uh, to, to cage that in the first time uh, because of the plaza getting destroyed. Um, but yeah, welcome back. Bring bring the uh, Fed employees back. The, uh, the area is clear now. They have fences. <laughs> the area is clear. They're loaded up with cops. They've got fences. I mean, this is this is just what we're doing, right? This is just what we're doing. And here's an additional wall of federal police vehicles that is apparently a common occurrence now. I count 10 vehicles in this video. Let's let's watch this video as well. Police, uh, federal police were outside San Francisco Federal Building. Residents say this has become a common sight in recent days. And so let's watch this one as well. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. DAs, right? You got 10 cops there. So, you know, (laughs) 
So what do you do when you've got an area that is just overrun with criminal elements? Yeah, you load it up with cops and you try and keep loaded that element away from people that it might impact. So it can be done. It's just how much in the way of resources do you want to spend doing that? And this is just the federal building. So imagine all those other buildings in this area, because now all of those drug dealers, those drug addicts, people selling who knows what are now have moved on to a different, different local lo- location, right? Because the addiction didn't go away. No, the, the criminal element didn't go away. The everything that these folks need to do to get their next couple of bucks for their next fix, that didn't go away. It's just, it moved, you know, whack-a-mole. But what we've got going on is we've got the APEC conference coming up and you've got some conferences going on in San Francisco, some big ones. Now, Google just said no to one in 2024. They're going to move it, I think, to Nevada. So you've got this real battle of revenue coming into San Francisco from tourism, from business tourism, essentially. And, you know, big companies are going, we're not really sure if we want to continue with San Fran. And so, you know, one of the things you look at is, well, what kind of shape is the federal? Oh, that's your federal building. Good Lord. If that's an indication of how things have gone here, then um, yeah, maybe we don't bring our employees in. And, you know, the story that got out with the federal employees all working from home, if that doesn't kind of give you an indication of what's going on, then yeah. So, and then here's the paragraph with the new fence technology. That's, that's just so funny. I mean, so here's, here's an indication of before and after let's, let's do this one. I mean, while we're at it, let's, let's just go. Night and day, right? You, you, you place 10 cop cars across the street, 10 federal cop cars. You're not messing around. <laughs> you can do it. You can clean it up. So all of this, I don't know what, what to do. It's a matter of resources, right? It's a matter of putting the hammer down, dropping the hammer. The local news report features an interview with the homeless woman who says San Francisco is like known for the drug trade. Indeed it is, which is part of the problem. And specifically around the federal building, the UN Plaza, and just load it up with you know, this whole element. And you can even see in that one, that last video we played, yeah, people in tents on the sidewalks. That way you can just go in there and smoke a little fentanyl and yeah, do your deal, whatever, move on out in plain sight. I mean, just right there, sidewalk, federal building, right? But maybe the real lesson here is that when there's a problem the city actually wants to fix, they know how to fix it. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. You add fences, you add police, and you make arrests of people using and deal drugs. It works because drug addicts are, above all, lazy. They don't want to waste time and energy being hassled by cops when they could be getting high. Absolutely true. And it's not because they don't want to waste time because they're you know, worried about their time management. It's because if they get detained, they know they're going to go through a little detox. And that is not what they're looking for. They need the cleanest route between their next fixes so that they don't get sick. Right? And so when you're faced with that, I'm not going to go near 10 cop cars that are apparently arresting people. Mayor London Breed has said that she, you know, she is really going after the drug trade. Well, kind of. We're kind of cleaning things up because we need to, you know, we need to polish the turd that has become San Francisco. Need to polish that turd so that businesses don't leave in even greater numbers than they already are, so that conventions coming to town will not cancel in 2024. This has been ongoing for years, but it's gotten to that point where big businesses are saying, you know what, we're going to take our folks elsewhere. But at the same time this is happening, the mayor and police chief are under pressure from activists and city council members who say arresting users accomplishes nothing. That's true if your only metric for success is getting addicts into treatment. 
because that's not what's going on. Two people have entered drug treatment through a new initiative that San Francisco police launched in late May to arrest people suspected of using drugs in public. Dose. Two people. Two. The initiative, which launched alongside a number of local, state, and federal law enforcement efforts targeting the city's open-air drug markets, has resulted in the arrest of 476 people who are suspected of using drugs or being under the influence of drugs in public. So they've had just a bunch of arrests, but two people went to treatment? These folks don't want to go to treatment. They just don't. That's not the deal. They're on such strong drugs, and they came to San Francisco because like Portland, like Seattle, the world is your oyster if you're an addict. I mean, we just make it so easy. We just basically say, hey, come on here. We're a sanctuary city. We've got it all going on. Cheap drugs, they're plentiful. If you get busted, nothing's really going to happen to you. Come to our city. Come to our fair city. Have a good time. So I know that's small numbers, but we started at zero Police Chief Scott said at a San Francisco Police Commission meeting on Wednesday, you'll never hear me say that arresting folks will solve addiction, but these are still crimes. And you know what? What I would say to the activists and city council members that arresting people doesn't help. Well, you never know because oftentimes it's like somebody's fifth or sixth arrest if they're younger some cop just keeps hammering on them and eventually something happens and they decide, you know what? I got to do something to get out of this lifestyle. But so many of them are in so deep that they just, you know, they've got mental issues, you know, on top of that. So they can't make these decisions to, to try and get sober. So does leaving them on the street to just do their thing, like around the UN Plaza, like around the federal building, is that the answer? No, no, you got to push back. You got to arrest them. You got to get them out. You got to just keep doing that. Rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat, because that's really the only battle that can be fought, right? You can't enforce these folks to go into involuntary treatment. You can't force them to go into involuntary mental health care treatment. You don't have those options. So you got to do what you can to keep the street safe. If that means you arrest a bunch of folks. Then you do. But San Francisco isn't really doing that. They're talking about, well, we arrested 476 people who were suspected of you. What did that really accomplish? You got them off the streets temporarily. You know, they went right back on. You know, they went right back on. Drugs are being taken off the street and addicts are being arrested and could face charges for illegal activity. That ought to count for something. But in San Francisco, it's not clear that it does. Same thing in Portland. It's not clear that it does because it really doesn't do anything. Because there's still no actions. There's no consequences for your actions. You sell dope? That's okay. It's okay. I mean, right now, in you know, you've got the sweep thing in San Francisco. You get a federal injunction against sweeps because of the way that the you know housing is interpreted. Okay, so you, you can't do a sweep until you have this many XYZ number of housing opportunities for people. But the vast majority of these people in these encampments, they don't want to go in to city, county, state funded housing. They just don't want to do it. So it's a non-issue. But we've got this issue where the sweeps aren't happening and Mayor Breed is screaming, we got to get the sweeps going. Well, how's that working out for you? This is what you voted in. It's what the people wanted. This is where you sit. Now you can't have it because public safety has just gone right down the toilet. The only goal that that matters to the activists is serving the needs of the addicts. That is 100% true. That's all you're doing. You're enabling a lifestyle that is going to kill them. And I don't say that rhetorically. Literally, it's going to kill them. So making the streets safer for everyone by punishing lawbreakers means nothing. And that's why open-air drug markets frequented by homeless addicts and drug tourists from other areas are so common in the city. Because they're allowed to flourish. You allowed them to flourish. This is what you wanted. And now you want something else. I say good luck with that. Because it's just going to be a massive battle to get to a point where you can actually get some traction. And I don't think the city of San Francisco has the will. I don't think the city of Portland has the will 
to actually drop the hammer, start arresting people, throwing them into jail, having them detox there. I mean, we just don't have the facilities to make all of this happen. So what's going to happen? Well, you're going to have this temporary cleanup. In Portland, you're going to have some temporary cleanups. But long term, if you understand what the root cause of this is, unless you get people, some of these addicts, some help, I mean, and, and people know, hey, I can go to San Francisco, I can go to LA, I can go to Seattle, I can go to Portland and do my thing. I mean, until you start to chip away at that, which means some pushback. And most of these cities don't have the ability to push back, I don't think. I mean, look at what's happening with Mayor London Breed. You know, she just gets kind of boxed out at every turn. She, she's trying to show, hey, we're coming down hard. But actually what's happening is that, you know, yeah, they're arresting a few, but is anybody going to tr- – no. So, you know, ultimately, you've just got whack-a-mole going on, right? So we got the APEC conference coming in into San Francisco, uh, November 14th and 15th at mid, mid November, I think is where it is. And that's the Asia Pacific economic conference, big conference. So we're trying to clean the streets up. We're trying to get things. We're trying to polish that turd. Hey, let's, let's at least get the federal building looking a little better. UN Plaza area. Yeah. We need to, we need to square things up. I mean, we gotta, it's kind of like what Seattle did. For the All Star Game, for Taylor Swift, you know, months before that, oh, we're, we're going to do some strategic uh, sweeps, and you know, they're all right around the big stadiums, areas that have been ignored for months and months and years and years. All of a sudden, hey guys, need to move your RVs. We're sweeping it out. Yeah, I don't know if you noticed, but there's a big stadium up there, and that's where they're going to have the All Star Game. So you guys are out of here, and people are like, okay, where do we got to go? And, you know, they haul or drive or whatever their, their broken down RV a few blocks down and they do their thing there. You're just literally shifting folks around, not really getting any traction, not really, not really doing much for the city, but it's all you got because the residents of these cities have said, you know what? We're okay with drugs. Yeah, they voted to decriminalize them. We're okay with shoplifting. It's okay. I mean, we're all right with that. We we don't want to be racist. We don't want to arrest anybody. And then that's filtered down to just all of this stuff happening. And now it's having some pretty major repercussions. Got the whole work from home thing in San Francisco as an example. You got massive budget deficits, all part of kind of that doom loop cycle. But the open air street, you know, use drug usage and sales is such a turnoff. So, I mean, it's just, it's like, where are we? Which part of New Jack City, which part of Escape from New York, which part of Mad Max, you know, are we experiencing here? Because this doesn't look like a normal sidewalk. You can see the same thing in Seattle on Third Avenue between Pike and Pine. It's this just absolute lawless environment selling God knows what in there. And people getting, you know, people getting robbed, people getting accosted, people getting shot, people getting murdered. I mean, that, that it's a known quantity to the point where Amazon said, yeah, that office space we've got overlooking that area. Not so much where we're not going to do that. Ikea did open up a store like on Fourth Avenue, next street up. Super close. But they, from my understanding, they have massive presence, massive security presence. So if you want to go in there and try and rip them off, you know, good luck with that. But shoplifting has gotten wildly out of control. And, um, you know, why wouldn't it? Same thing here. Why wouldn't these open air drug areas just continue to flourish? Because you're not, there's no consequences to legal activity anymore. It's like, this is just what we're doing. So until somebody gets the idea that, hey, you know, it's kind of like this new fence technology. Hey, you know, there's such a thing as treatment. Try and help some people. But no, the thing that we're told that is compassionate is to just let these people do their thing, which inevitably, you know, can kill them. And we're not just throwing that out there as some conservative storyline. It's literally happening. So uh, until that starts to happen, 
expect much of the same. I mean, there, there, there's no way this is going to go. Everything else is just some activity, you know, putting fence up and lying in the street. The, 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 you know, the, can you imagine those, those 10 feds, 10 fed, you know, police sets of police officers in those cars. All right. You know, and, and we're the mayor's bitches. You know, we got to go swipe up whatever, <laughs> you know, they, they, they let it happen. And now they want us to clean it up. And these are fed cops, right? I mean, I'm sure they're excited about scooting along the local drill, drug dealer, arresting them, knowing damn well that nobody's going to do any time. I mean, that's just, it's what we're doing. San Francisco, right? Seattle, it's Portland. It's what we're doing. All right. That's it for me on this one. Thanks so much. I will see you on the next one. Bye for now.